are people who do like uh, news stuff. They're like, blah, 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 blah. hello and welcome to Space Time with Robert. I'm Robert. And we're looking at planet Saturn through two different telescopes live from Bellingham, Washington. 48 degrees north. Uh, yeah, that's Cassini division in the ring there. You can kind of make it out actually. Oh, you can make it out on the phone. And I can definitely make out that the ring is separate from the planet. On the lower screen, we've got planet Saturn again, but you can kind of make out the moons. Two moons. I don't know which moons they are, but there they are. Pretty cool. Space. Oh, it's cloudy over there. Sorry to hear that. Well, this view is for you. Thanks for jumping in, Pumpkin Eater 56. And we're looking through Henrietta and Alice simultaneously. The top view is Henrietta, the lower view is Alice. Henrietta is a Mead 8 inch uh, catadioptric telescope. That's a Schmidt Cassegrain. And the lower telescope is a 80 millimeter refractor. You can tell by the purple halo around Saturn because we're really overexposed so we can bring out those moons. Good morning. Beautiful sky above us. Welcome. My telescope is drifting a little bit. I did my best to align it. I did a lot to align it, but not, yeah, not the best. There's the gnomes inside the telescope. What's the purple ring? The purple ring is caused by the 80 millimeter refractor. It's um, achromatic refractor uh, lens. So the lens will um, try and focus light to a certain point, but it doesn't do it perfectly. Some of the reds and some of the blues don't get focused to a perfect point when we focus the telescope. And that causes a halo around the things that we do have focused that are bright. And that halo is the blues and reds mixed together, which happen to be purple for our eyes. I think that's how it works. If I'm wrong, let me know. And yes, planet Saturn is incredible. Thanks, Matthias. Thank you for joining. What is your favorite planet? Cheyenne, what's your favorite planet? Oh, my favorite planet? Um, it's probably a tie between Saturn and Uranus. But I also, I really like Neptune. our planet. Earth is pretty cool. Earth is pretty cool. <laughs> But yeah, I would, I would say either Saturn or Uranus. I really like Jupiter. I'm Jupiter's going with, cool. tonight I'm going to go with Jupiter as my answer. Nice. Changes every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. That looks awesome. Jupiter, we got two Jupiters. Jupiter's popular tonight. And it's not even the one in view. <laughs> no. Poor Saturn. <laughs> Kronos, hang in there. I'm here for you, Saturn. Ooh, the alignment's actually doing really well. I thought it was drifting. Never mind. It kind of like drifted itself back. Saturn looks really good. It does. I feel like we can see a lot of detail on, it on the live stream. What do you think? I agree. Okay, cool. I'm not crazy. I mean, you are, but like, you're just not correct. <laughs> it's the hair. <laughs> Channeling that Einstein. It's the first time you've seen it like this. Whoa. Well, cool. I'm glad I am able to do this for you. We were able to do this. Thanks for joining in, too. drifts out of screen, I will move it back. We have the power, but I'll just try not to touch it for as long as possible. It's 
Saturn, where do you think you're going, buddy? We're not done with you. And we get it back in view. There we go. And on uh, this screen here, you can actually see maybe those moons a little bit better. We got one and two of them. And here I'll just uh, adjust the exposure just so you can tell that we are actually looking at Saturn with this little telescope, not just some bright star off in the distance. See, there it is. Kind of make out the ring. Okay. Back to where we were. Okay, yeah, you can't see. The, all right, I just want to make sure you can see the moon on the lower screen. Cool, you can. Uh, Jupiter is in the sky tonight. And I'm going to do a power check. Let's see how much power we got left. 53%. Okay, we're doing good. Uh, any chance you'll be shooting any nebula soon? Awesome views. Thank you. Um, nope, we're not shooting, but we can if you want to. I mean, we can jump onto a nebula. Over. Of course we can do that. Uh, pick a nebula. I'll try and aim it at it. Uh, I can type it into the telescope. Or I'll pick one for you if you want. We can do, like, I want to say, we can try and do the Dumbbell Nebula. That'd be cool. What is that? Um, M27? And uh, if we do the nebula, though, we will be jumping over to just Alice, the uh, Mead 8-inch ACF Al uh, Henrietta, that telescope, the one that's on the top view. It's using a planetary imaging camera, so it won't pick up the nebula very well, if not at all, or if at all. So we'll just switch over to the lower view if you want to do that. But we could also take a quick stop at Jupiter and just see how that looks, too, because I'm sure it does look cool. After the nebula, can you try for Jupiter? You got it. That's it. All right, so I'm going to switch over to um, Halus, the uh, 80 millimeter. Now we're going to zoom out. <coughs> I'm going to move this down a little bit so all you see is that screen. Cool. There's Jupiter, and let's go for a nebula. Let's go, what is it? Object, deep sky, nebulas. No, I want to go to just Messier objects. Let's see. Messier objects number 27, I want to say. Dumbbell nebula. Dumbbell nebula. Oh, yeah, I got it. Cool. All right. Let's see. So a small telescope looks for a huge cloud with a slightly rectangular shape. Dumbbell nebula is located in the dumbbell We're going to the dumbbell nebula. It's quite striking and colorful and is a popular choice with observers and astrophotographers. It's about 1,000 light years from Earth, is 8 by 4 arc minutes in size, and shines at a magnitude of 7.6. just going to let the telescope settle down a little bit. Um, it, I, uh, the tracking is a little finicky. 
but it seems like it's getting pretty stable right there. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and drop the gain so we can smooth this out a little bit. But we're looking at the Dumbbell Nebula M27 right now, requested by, uh, was it, uh, Beautiful Sky Above Us. And thanks for requesting it, by the way. And after this, we're going to go to Jupiter. So I'm going to increase the exposure to two seconds. That's okay. But I think we can do better. I'm going to increase the uh, gamma here. Okay, I can start to see some color, actually. Mm -hmm. Some red. Yeah. All right, and that was just me adjusting the phone. I'm going to drop the gain again, and I'm going to increase the exposure to four seconds this time. So double the exposure, drop the gain. See if we can get more color, less noise. Okay, cool. We're starting to really see a nebula here. That's awesome. Kind of noisy, though. I, I don't like all that noise. If we had the cooled version of this camera, we would maybe not be dealing with this problem. Robert, if you just could spend a couple hundred more dollars next time. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to drop the uh, gain and increase the exposure. It's a little smoother. This telescope does do okay around eight seconds of exposure, so we'll go up to eight seconds. Once I start going about 10, 12, I feel like I start to see some star trails. That looks a lot nicer, actually. Mm -hmm. So here we are at eight seconds of exposure of the Dumbbell Nebula. It's, I forget what constellation this is in. It's between Altair in the constellation of um, Aquila, Aquila, and um, it's in between the brightest star of Aquila and the brightest star of Cygnus. Uh, it's almost in between the two. It's more towards the star Altair than it is um, Daneb in Cygnus. It's kind of a tricky one to find. I've had um, trouble finding it just like with my Dobsonian, but uh, luckily we've got a motorized telescope that's just doing all this for us. Science, technology. This is, this is really cool. I feel like I see a little double star down there at the bottom. Here, I'm going to point it out. Right here. Oh, yeah. I feel like I see two stars right there. Yeah. Um, anything that you see that's very red or green, those are hot pixels. Those are not actually stars. I can point those out as well. For instance, this and this, those two things are probably not stars. Those look like aberrations uh, caused by the camera itself. Just so you know. And cool, there's the Dumbbell Nebula. Cool, it looks really good tonight. Yeah, it does. I, I feel like I see more color on it than usual. Shall we go to Jupiter? Or does it... Uh, we'll do one more exposure. Cool, there it is. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to drop the exposure and... We're going to head on over to... Oh, wow, you can't even see it anymore. Yeah. It's hidden back there. And off we go to Jupiter now. Planets. Distinguished by its giant 
red spot thought to be comprised of a raging storm of hydrogen and ammonia. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, with a mass oh, two and a half times greater than that of all the other planets combined. Impressed by its colossal size, ancient Roman astronomers named the colorful behemoth after their primary god, Jupiter, or Jove. Later philosophers attributed human happiness to the planet's power, giving rise to the term jovial. In its far-reaching journey around our sun, over 60 moons come along for the ride, including the Galileo-discovered moons of Callisto, Ganymede, Io, and Europa. But Jupiter is never in a hurry. Before it can complete just one revolution around the sun, we Earthlings have completed nearly 12. Jupiter is the fifth planet from right, the sun. Where is it? Often hailed as the <laughs> nope. king of the planets, it is so large that if it had grown much larger, it might have become a star. Compare Jupiter's diameter of 85,000 miles with Earth's diameter of 7,900 miles. Jupiter is well known for its famous red spot, which is a storm that has been raging for hundreds of years, or perhaps longer. The face of Jupiter is defined by colorful bands that are easily observed. Let's see in those colorful color. bands. The exact composition of Jupiter is not known, but it is thought to be made up primarily of hydrogen and ammonia. It is believed that Jupiter has a rocky core about five to ten times as large as the Earth's diameter. Jupiter has a harem of small moons, and several dozen have been discovered in the last few years. But four major satellites are easily visible orbiting the king of planets. Callisto, Ganymede, Io, and Europa. Ganymede and Europa are covered with oceans of ice, and maybe even liquid water under the ice. These four largest moons are known as the Galilean moons, as they were discovered by Galileo in 1610. In 1994, comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 which had been broken up into 23 pieces by Jupiter's enormous gravity, crashed into Jupiter. We can see a moon right here, kind of. Oh, you can't really see it in the live stream, though, can you? Here, let me see if I can get that. I'm going to increase the gain just a wee bit. Oh, yeah, I think you can see it a little bit now. Okay, cool. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> not anymore. All right, I'm trying to get Jupiter in view in two telescopes right now. And in this telescope, let's zoom in here. Here are the moons again, and let's see if we can actually see. Oh, cool. There's two of them that are right next to each other. Oh, yeah. They're hanging out. Awesome. I'm gonna just set this right here and hopefully it doesn't drift too bad. There we go, Jupiter. Uh, on the lower view, we've got four moons. And on the upper view, we've got um, just Jupiter and its cloud belts. Our seeing conditions are not the best tonight. I feel like we've seen a lot more detail on this before. Like we can see little white storms sometimes. They're very little, they're about the size of moons, uh, Jupiter's moons. And um, they go across like, uh, I wanna say the Southern part of Jupiter, but uh, sometimes we can see the great red spot. All I'm able to see is one orange band and maybe a few faint orange bands here and there. They're tan actually in color not really orange to me whereas down below we've got the infamous purple halo going around because of the 80 millimeter it looks really cool though and we can clearly see the two moons that are right next to each other and one moon that's off by itself on the other side of jupiter which one do you think that is i'm gonna guess eo I was going to say it's probably Io. Or Io, Io, sorry. Io, whatever, however you're pronouncing it. <laughs> U Uo. I think that's the one that hangs out really close to Jupiter. I mean, it does smell like sulfur. Uo. Uo. <laughs> I 
And yeah, here's Jupiter. What would you like to see after this? Let me see how much power we got. I did see someone requested Saturn again. Saturn again? Okay. We're at 40%. We should be able to do that. <laughs> Mars. I don't know if Mars is in the sky tonight, actually. I thought it was on the uh, the sun's side right now and possibly has already gone down with the sun. I can't be sure. Um, I can look for it. We have our constellation expert looking it up right now. And those for just joining in, this is planet Jupiter through a telescope, through two telescopes. Where are we? We are in Bellingham, Washington. Uh, I think it's longitude 48 degrees north. Is that longitude or latitude? I forget. Up and down? Yeah. Longitude. Longitude. 48 degrees north. Latitude, I think, is 122 degrees west. Negative. Negative 122 degrees. But uh, Puget Sound, Washington. Mars is not in the sky for us tonight. Thank you, Cheyenne. <clears throat> so, unfortunately, Mars is not available. However, I wouldn't mind checking out the Andromeda Galaxy. That's one of my favorites. And it is very dark over there in that region of the sky. It is very dark over there, actually. It so looks very clear, too. We might get some good contrast on it. The uh, beautiful sky above us is in England right now. Oh, cool. That's, wow. Heck yes, Andromeda Galaxy. Yeah, yeah all right, cool. All right, so there was a request for Saturn. We're going to go back to Saturn real quick. How we do this is we're going to jump over to Alice's view. We're going to jump, zoom out like that. And I'm going to increase the exposure. Mind you, the camera that's on Alice is a ZWO ASI 294. You know, I should probably remember <laughs> that before I tell you what it is. But yeah, it's ASI 294, I believe. And <clears throat> so it gets us these nice wide angles that are very bright. So I want to brighten it up so I can easily find Saturn. And I'm just going to jump on over to it with the controls rather than look for it through the menu. Just like this. We're doing the cowboy way. No, no. No. There it is. Okay, so that's Saturn. Now we need to get it in view in both telescopes. So we'll try and do that now. Can we see it already? No, we cannot. All right, now I just need to move around a little bit until I find it. Hmm. We're struggling. Um, let me put on my crosshairs here because I feel like that helped me last time. And if 
felt like, um, okay, yeah. There nice. we go. Okay, so let me just get uh, Saturn centered onto Henrietta's sensor, which is using the ZWO ASI 120 MC. It's a different camera. It's a planetary imaging camera hooked up to a bigger telescope. Oh boy. A little sticky. Yeah. I wonder if it's the dew or the condensation. I'm not sure what it is that causes it, but the telescope just seems to get stickier over time. And uh, as I use it throughout the night, Sorry, we're working on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, oh, okay, I think we're getting it. I didn't just jinx it, did I? Oh, oh stay where you are. Stay where you are, Saturn. <laughs> stay. Just hang out with us, buddy. Hang out. Please. Kronos, god of time. All right, um, let's drop the exposure, drop the gain. Get a nice clean image of Saturn here. Oh, cool. Nice. We can see some of the Cassini division in there, I feel like. That looks really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, for bonus points, let's show both views. Come over here, take off the crosshairs, zoom in. You can see um, Saturn that we were using for aiming, but we can also see in this zoomed out view here. Sorry to just tease you with zooming in and then going back to this view, but you can see the moons there. It's cool. And then, booyah. Ta-da. You got Saturn and its moons. We'll stay here for a little bit and then we'll jump on over to the Andromeda Galaxy. And thanks for uh, hanging in there and being patient and, you know, space. I heard some crazy stuff about the history of astronomy. Astrometry, ast astrometry, the measuring of stars and stuff like that. Apparently, uh, Ptolemy used centuries of data to calculate the orbit of um, Earth to get it down to such a fine point of like 365.24 days or something like that. So it wasn't just him going out and taking measurements every single day. It was uh, him using centuries, hundreds and hundreds of years of people doing that thing. So I was just like, oh, that, that's how it's done. That's how you get that high precision. Here we are going out every night getting measurements of the sun's angle. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking that we're gonna get some like high precision measurement of some sort. <laughs> takes a lot of time and patience, I guess. All right, sorry, I'm asking some questions. Can you point out its moons? I can only spot one. Yes, I can actually. Do you see one right here? Okay, how about one right here? Close, it's kind of lost in the glow. Let me see if I can drop the exposure. And maybe drop the gain too, because it looks a little noisy. Sorry, I'm fighting with my mouse. Yeah, it is hard to see. I agree. It is very hard to see. It, it like shimmers in and out every now and then right mm -hmm. there. Here, let me see if I can zoom it in closer. And I'll move it up here for you just so you can see. And we're looking at that little guy right there. Oh, you see the closer one as well. Okay, cool. And I'll jump back over. So for people joining in, here's Saturn through the uh, eight inch.
Okay, how about, was there any more questions? Hey, what's up, Peter? And this is uh, planet Saturn, in case anyone's wondering. Oh, do you see which moons they are? Uh, yeah, I do see those I two close think, moons right there. Yeah, that's Rhea and Mimas. Yeah. My, I don't know how to pronounce that. M- Mimas, <laughs> I think. Mimas, probably. Um, Titan is a little further out, it looks like, probably. Really? Or, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Or maybe that is Titan, and that might be Rhea. Yeah, that's that's very possible. Oh, yeah, that's probably true okay so this is titan right here yes and then the closer one is Rhea. And the, okay cool thank you yeah there is a little one really close to saturn but i don't think that we're making that out i think i was just zoomed in too far i feel like you can still see it now actually I dropped the glow, and you can actually make out sort of the shape of Saturn now on the bottom screen, as well as those two moons. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to do a power check. Let's see, where, where, where are we at? We have 27% left. So, when we start getting into the 20% range, it's going to start dimming the screen on us and stuff and being like that. Uh, I am now going to move the telescope over to the Andromeda Galaxy. Thanks for hanging out, Saturn. All right, let's do this. We're back over to the Mead ETX-80, Alice. We're going to bump up the exposure again, and I'm just going to wing it on over to where I believe the Andromeda Galaxy is. Oh, I got it? I think so. I see something that looks like Oh, cool. There it is. Oh, this is a satellite that went by. That's oh, so cool. Oh, that's so cool. Good timing. Nice. All right. We just had a satellite pass in front of the Andromeda Galaxy for us. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Okay. Let me see if I can drop the gain a little bit. And here's the core of a, another galaxy, our nearby galaxy. And you can kind of, I feel like, I feel like I see something over here. I'm not sure. Here, let's, uh, let's start bumping up the exposure. Let's go up to one second of exposure. And drop the gain again. And we'll just do that smoothing thing like we did with uh, the Dumbbell Nebula. Is that the satellite galaxy up to the upper left? Right here? Yeah. I want to say it is. It just seems like such a bright core. Yeah. That it it kind of seems like a star. And I Mm -hmm. know we've done this before because there's usually a bright red star. There it is. Nearby. That kind of does the same thing. But, you know, that's red. Mm -hmm. And very obviously some sort of red star. Here, I'll try and increase the saturation for you all so you can see the kind of colors that we're seeing. Okay, cool. And I'm gonna go on up to about four seconds of exposure and also drop the gain. Okay. Oh, cool, I can make out a couple dark bands. 
So can I. That's really cool. You mean like vertically, right? Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Oh, that's a galaxy. What? So here you can see these dark uh, bands. That's dust. That's a part of the spiral arms of the galaxy. And it's blocking the light that would be coming from the galaxy. Okay, let's uh, drop the gain some more and increase the exposure to eight seconds. So in eight seconds, it should update here and we'll see what it looks like. It's about the same. Yeah. I'm not noticing much difference. Hello, Nathan. We're looking at the Andromeda Galaxy right now, M31. And we are going to lose power here soon, so thank you for joining in. Probably got another couple minutes. Uh, we're looking through an 80 millimeter telescope right now, a little backpacking telescope. Alice is its name. That looks very smooth. Mm -hmm. And every eight seconds, the image is updating. I want to know what the telescope, if the telescope has anything to say about it. Hopefully it doesn't move. pretty bright. I forget how bright Jupiter is right now. I think it's actually negative something. Um, <clears throat> magnitude brightness uh, is just some weird number that they use to tell you, to, to just put a number against how bright a star is. Guess how bright the sun is. Oh, that's going to be a very, very, very low number, right? Negative, like, yeah, you got it. You're right. It's, it's, it's unintuitive. It's counterintuitive, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't even want to think about that. Negative 27, I believe, is the number. Oh, okay. That's crazy. That's how bright our sun is. What is, what's an object that's at zero? Do you know? I forget, actually. It's some star, I want to say. Um, 
and I forget which star it is, but there is a star, and it's not at perfectly zero. It's very close to zero. I don't think there, we know, I'm, I'm not sure if there's a star that's like visible in the sky that is at zero brightness. That's so weird. I just like wonder what they base the the like, standard on the scale. On. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good I'll I'll get I'll get back <laughs> to you on like, that. Mm, this is like one point three. Let's start from there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's time to wrap it up. Let's see. Oh yeah, we're getting low on power. Okay, thank you all for joining in and checking out Saturn, Jupiter, the Dumbbell Nebula, and the Andromeda Galaxy with us. We're going to wrap it up and take off now. <clears throat> but before I go, I would love to show you the actual telescope itself and the setup, just so you know the, the magic behind the science. Where, where do we have a light? Let's see. I, I can that, provide light. I also have this light. <clears throat> got light here. Okay, cool. I've got a light. All right, I'm going to show you the telescope now. So I just took my phone off the thing. So, oh, sorry, that's a, that is a bright light. Oh, that is so bright. Here, let's use your light. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. I got like this spotlight <laughs> for helicopters in my hands. Um, here you can see the Andromeda Galaxy and the Surface Pro. And that's where we were um, strapping the phone to the box. Over here on this side, you can just see some cords and adapters that we use to hook up to both cameras at the same time. Here are both the telescopes. On the left, we have Henrietta. On the right, we have Alice. Hooked up to Alice is the, let's see if I said it right, yeah, it was 294. ZWASI 294, and as you can see, it's getting a lot of light in that exposure there. <laughs> so, uh, and that is hooked up to the secondary saddle here on the left side of the Mead LX65. That's the mount that we were using that was getting a little sticky. Sorry to point that out again, Mead, my bet. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then here's the planetary imaging camera that we were using, the ZWO ASI 120MC. That's what we were using for looking um, close up to Saturn and Jupiter. And there they all are. The beautiful setup. Thank you all for checking out space with us. And stay safe and keep looking up and... Welcome to the universe if you've never been a part of it. See you later. Bye. <laughs> At least I didn't fart this time. <laughs> I mean, could have been, been worse.